Hello everyone, this is Marianne, the Artsy Crafter. Welcome to my channel. This is the second video in a series of um, videos on how to make a Christmas journal from scratch. If you haven't seen the first video, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Go check that out first and then come back to this one. Um, today, we have a lot to get through. Um, we're going to do um, the... Um, or go through the base pages that you need to make up um, the journal itself. Um, we're going to um, doing a coffee dyeing tutorial on showing you two methods of how to um, coffee dye your papers. Um, one is um, coffee dyeing and one is actually coffee spraying in, your, um, in a spray bottle. Um, we also will make... Um, the first background papers um, for our journal and also making the cover base. So there's a lot to get to, so we better get started. So this is um, a reminder, this is the journal that we're working on through this series. So I'll put that aside. Here are the base pages that um, I'm using to make up the base of, or most of the journal. Um, this is just the um, copy paper, regular weight copy paper, 80 GSM or 20 pound in this. Um, this is the book pages we're using to make the base. Some ruled paper or journal paper. It doesn't have to be ruled. You can just have plain papers if you want to not use um, ruled papers. Um, some um, coffee dyeing, um, sorry, music paper. Um, ones that are already vintage look coffee dye this didn't coffee dye very well the last time i did it so um, which you'll see in the video um but anyway um i ended up downloading some um ones that already vintage look to it so anyway um you don't have to use a music sheet if you don't want to but anyway um this is some um what i call sketchbook paper it's got a bit of texture to it and this is what we'll be painting all of the backgrounds on um, so it's 110 GSM or 29 30 pound weight um, wouldn't I don't know whether I mentioned it before but I wouldn't use anything thicker because it's just thick enough to take um, watercolors or pencils or whatever it's thick enough to paint on but it's not too thick to put in your journal um, otherwise the pages anything thicker than this would be a bit uh, in my opinion would be a bit too thick to make the pages up and you'll have very stiff pages because you'll be adding layers and layers onto these papers so that's those okay so let's go through the um the supplies um quickly before we go any further um just some basic supplies you need um metal ruler um would be handy things like staplers pens pencils we've got scissors here Three kinds of scissors these are the fussy cut scissors with the pointy end um, just some craft scissors and these are um, fancy edging scissors if you don't have them um, don't worry about it um, a cutting knife or craft knife um, if you're going to use one of these you'll definitely need to have a cutting mat you don't have to have a big one you can have I just got this one from a um, discount store just a little small one there um, and then um, other tools that are handy if you have this is what called a bone folder if you don't have a bone folder that's no worries you can use this is for um, um, reinforcing your spine um, and burnishing your pages down when you're gluing um, them together but you can use a pair of scissors or um, a ruler um, a hole punch would be handy for um, punching the top of tags in particular. Um, some tweezers for picking, picking up some little um, bits and pieces that we're using. Um, you know, like um, um, cutouts and buttons and all that kind of thing. Um, this is a embossing tool with the round edge. I don't use um, my... Um, oh, what do you call it? Um, big board that I scoring board. I just use this to score the pages, the hinges on the pages. Um, 
you don't have that you can use a plastic card um, this one I've cut the edges to make um, the tops of tags um, but usually they come with a straight edge and you can just use the edge to score your paper to help you fold it over more easily um, we use this is just masking regular masking tape we use to reinforce some of the spines um, the glues I use uh, this is just a, um, a clear craft glue it's a tacky glue um, I just put it I buy the big bottle and just put it in this small bottle um, fabric glue we don't get fabric tack or fabric fix here in Australia that I know of anyway so this is just a generic fabric glue um, the other thing we'll be using is a glue stick so that's glues you don't have to have all these just um, whatever you got on hand will be sufficient um, the painting the pages we have I've got two types of paint these are just generic brand paints they um, and these ones don't even have their colors on it so don't worry about that I'll show you which colors to use um, you can get them in little tubs like this for a few dollars or in the tubes um, I also use um, acrylic gold paint to paint some and do some splattering I also sometimes use some acrylic white paint um, the other things I have are um, you saw the spray bottle of the coffee dye and I also have a spray bottle of water to water down the paint I also have these little ones where I put some paint in here and some water and then I can use it to spray on the stencils uh, the we can also use pencils or um, these gel pens, various gel pens. I've only got a couple out here in these Christmassy colours. They're handy to have to um, do some outlining or colouring in of some of the um, decorative um, elements that we're going to put on the background pages. Um, I do use... Where is it? I'll put it the bottom. I have been using um, a gold gel pen, a white gel pen, and a black fine tip gel pen. Um, the paints, I use this one here for doing big areas. And then I just have um, some different size round brushes, the fine tip to a, a thicker one. Um, this one's just a little flat one I use. Um, this one is a fan brush. I use this mainly to do um, splattering the gold of the gold paint, gold and white paint. But um, these other ones will do, these bigger ones will do just as well if you don't have one of these brushes. Don't. The other thing is the inks. I've just been using a black, a brown, and a gold ink. Um, you don't have to get the big ones, you can get the little tiny ones there. Um, the I just use these makeup. Um, makeup sponges as daubers you don't have to go and get special daubers they work very well also um, for doing stenciling you can use the makeup brush um, they're very cheap to buy and they work fantastically in um, rubbing um, paint on the stencil without it bleeding underneath so you got those um, also doing some sponging so you can get all kinds of sponges you can get this one um, which is kind of a synthetic sea sponge and also this is just a cheap kitchen sponge that I've cut up a leaf shape there so if you've got those here's some um, stamps I've been using this is a stamp block um, using text stamp um, just use if you have stamps just use whatever you um, have on hand this is just a little leaf stamp um, um, the stencils that I used, oh, I do have some more stamps there. That's that's one text stamp. I'll show the stamps first. These here is just some Christmas stamps that I've collected over years. I never really use any of them, but um, I have on this journal. 
So then the stencils I have, these are just some old stencils that I don't really use. This time I did use the bauble stencil, um, but you can get other ones, you know, like bells and um, wreaths and all that kind of thing if you want to use them. Um, these are just some generic stencils. They're only cheap ones that I got from a craft store, a cheap store. Um, these are just um, look like leaves. Um, this is another one that's a leaf shape. Um, and also I did have a scroll one I lost somewhere along the line. So this one I found the other day, which has got snowflakes on. So I might use that one instead in this journal. So I just use whatever's on hand that I think um, will suit my journal. Um, some stickers like um, gold and silver stars I've got. This one I got out of a magazine. Um, it's stickers, but I haven't used it. I just cut the images out and glue them on the page. Um, this is another sticker I've had for a few years now and I still haven't used any of those images as yet. Um, here's the bubble wrap that I used to do, um, to paint. This you can see it's got red paint, so I painted red onto a background page. It's a decorative element. The other thing I've got is some Christmas napkin here. I glued this, uh, I took the backing up and glued this onto one of the pages. Um, so you don't have to, you can, if you want to do your backgrounds that way, you can just get a lot of um, wrapping paper and tissue paper and use them. You don't have to um, do what I'm doing and painting any of the pages. If you'd rather just take the um, quick method of decorating your pages. Put all these away. The other things I have are some, these ones here are a couple of elements that I bought that uh, these are Christmas leaves and some uh, wooden cutouts but I haven't used them. I may use it this time, I don't know, but that's those. Then I bought some, this is just that stiff Christmas ribbon that I used to for the binding on the journal, ribbon on the outside. It was a bit stiff, so I just washed it to get rid of all the starch and it was nice and soft. I um, also used this on the spine to cover up um, the stitching. So if you got some of that, that would be handy. Um, you can also use lace um, instead of ribbon. Um, these are just some other laces. These. I bought a couple this year um, with Christmas on it. Um, this is sticky tape, Christmas sticky tape. Um, it's um, easily available this time of year. This is great for um, um, when you want to add a flip out onto a page. This is great to use. That's those. And then um, other things I use are some laces in the journal. Just a couple of laces. Um, this time I'm going to um, trim, put some lace trim on the edges of the pages. Um, this is another leaf trim that I've, I've put in the in the journal on one of the pages. Um, as I said, you just pick out what you want to use on your journal. This is some glitter I've used. I also put some dangles on the journal. You don't have to put the dangles in, but I just thought there was something a little cute there that I showed you in the beginning. And buying the journal, I used, this is thick, oops, got a needle already there. This is just thick um, crochet cotton. It's a thicker than the, uh, just the regular. It's got a nice um, silky smooth um, feel to it and it's strong enough to use as um, binding you can use string and also um, the needle I use is a darning needle Oops, I can pick it up you can just use a regular needle if you want this has got a pointy end this is a darning needle it's got a, a blunt end the um, most important part of the needle is it needs to have a large eye to be able to thread the thread through to sew into the thread into your journal. Um, so these clips, really different types of clips, help you clip the pages together while you're sewing them in to the journal. Um, so that's those. That's 
Oh, there's the other part. Here's some fabric for your journal cover. So this is just a panel that I bought um, from a local haberdashery. And this is what I used on this journal. And I'll probably use it again because um, you only use it this time of year. So I just cut it up and put it in on the cover. So you can get a panel of that, something like that. You don't have to have a Christmas theme. You can have any, um, any theme you want. You want um, a cotton would be great and don't have it too thick. Um, <clears throat> just a regular weight. I'm going to lose my voice. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh dear. Um, just a regular weight so it's you can't see through it because when you glue the fabric um, onto the journal cover if the fabrics you can see through the fabric you can see you will see the glue through the fabric so just something that's regular weight cotton will be quite fine and there we go so let's get on with the next project if you want to follow um, what I've done in this journal then the papers you'll need to coffee dye uh, you'll need um, 16 of these coffee weight papers um, six of them we will be using a coffee spray method on with um, if you have some this is some paper doily so and this is a fabric doily that I got from an op shop so if you can't get a hold of a fabric doily um, see if you can get some paper doilies doesn't have to be round it could be any shape you want um, so that's where we'll be um, coffee spraying um, six of these papers that's that um, then we will be um, coffee spraying which will be done at the end um, two of these um, I call them art pages they're sketch paper or any paper that you're going to paint on um, two of these will be coffee spraying on and then um, the ruled papers or the journal papers that you want to use there'll be nine of those we will be coffee dyeing and the book pages um, you can get these out of um, you know tear them up out of old novels or you could use magazine pages or children's book pages um, so I've got some text on it um, we'll be doing two of these um, I've got some small ones here so there's two of those in that size and um, as I said I did do a music sheet but it didn't turn out very well um, now we'll go to the coffee dyeing tutorial and then we'll come back and we'll put the base journal together we'll see you soon I'm using an algae brand, it's just a cheap brand, the cheapest coffee um, that you can get. I'm going to put three tablespoons into the bowl when I get the bowl over. This will make a nice medium colour coffee dye. going to add 500 ml or a pint of water but I'm just going to add enough boiling water just to dissolve the coffee first now that's dissolved I'll add the rest of the water Now I'll slowly pour that into a shallow baking dish and we're ready to dye our pages. I do one sheet at a time. The um, thinner papers I tend to just dip in and I don't leave them soaking for too long otherwise they become um, wet and fragile and uh, more likely to tear. When I take it out I shake it off, get rid of the excess coffee dye and then I slide it onto a baking tray. 
I have a very small oven so I only have room for three baking trays. I put my oven on a moderate setting and I preheated the oven so they're ready to go. There are nine journal sheets that we're going to be copy dyeing. This is the copy paper, printer paper. This one, um, the paper is um, much stronger, thicker. I, uh, if I have bake, three baking trays that I'm using, I will put three pages in at a time. Let them soak until the other pages in the oven um, are ready to come out. It's a bit messy business. I put some plastic sheeting down on the bench first and then the wooden tray, a uh, wooden board, so that uh, when the trays come out of the oven, they're very hot. I don't want to melt the plastic and I just mop up any messes as they occur. The first sheets of paper usually take the longest because the oven um, is not quite as hot. The sheets take um, anywhere between a minute or two but it's good to keep an eye on them, keep checking on them um, because the thinner sheets will uh, dry much faster than the thicker sheets. Here we are with the first sheet ready to go. Another one all nice and dry and ready to use. the third sheet. I haven't fast forward this part so you can see um, in real time how long those pages took to dry in the oven. You can see they've just come out of the oven they're not still hot so be very careful um, when picking them up use a oven mitt or a tea towel. I won't copy dye all the pages on camera. I'll just show you uh, each type of paper that we're copy dyeing today, just to give you an idea of um, the process that I used. Here are the book pages. They're only smaller sheets so you can fit two together in the copy die. These are much thicker pages so you can um, put as you know a fair few in at a time to leave soak until you're ready to use them. It always pays to add a few extra pages more than you need um, just in case some of the papers do tear um, or you don't like the colour of them. Here are the copy papers. I'll just show you these last two pages and then we'll get on with the second coffee dyeing method and that's with the spray bottle 
and then after that we will um, let the papers dry and then I'll show you uh, all the papers together that we've um, been dyeing today. We will um, pour the coffee dye into a jug with a lip. I'll make sure to do it slowly so I don't spill any. Now I'll pour the coffee dye into a spray bottle like this one. This coffee dye will last um, about one or two weeks, so it needs to be used up fairly quickly. Um, I'll just show you a couple of pages um, how I do the coffee spray method. So instead of having to do dip the pages into the coffee dye, this way you just put the pages onto a baking sheet and then spray them with the coffee dye. You can also um, bake these in the oven to dry or just leave them on the bench to dry. It's up to you. The coffee spray method tends to um, give a more all over um, even coat on both sides than the coffee um, dyeing method in the pan. You just turn it over and do the other side. I'm going to um, to dry these in the oven. It's much faster than um, waiting for them to dry, air dry. If you get a bit of a drip and you don't want um, that drip, you just use your finger to rub it out. I'll just do another sheet just to show you the um, method again. Now we're going to spray coffee spray um, using the lace doilies. First I'll use the fabric lace doily. Try to center it on the page. Make sure it's flat. And then just lightly spray over the top. This is like magic to me. It's amazing how it gets into all the little holes in the lace to make this pattern. So pretty. Now I'm going to use the paper doilies to show you how this method, how these work. So you can make as um, many variations of paper doilies as um, you wish. Make up your own designs. I'm going to use the small ones first to make a design in the center. Place the big one on the top on one side. Then on the other side. Because with the paper doilies you don't get as much lace design on the page as you do with the fabric doily, but it still makes a very pretty design. There we go. very pretty. Now you've seen um, the two methods of um, paper dyeing. Um, you can go and try it for yourself now and get those pages done and we'll see you soon.
So here we are, back with um, all our pages um, that have been copy dyed or copy sprayed. Um, these are the copy weight papers that we did. These are the ones that we dyed and um, either um, air dried naturally or you dried them in the oven. So and that's those texture ones there. This is the alternate method, um, the coffee spraying to if you didn't want to do the coffee dyeing, um, just the spraying. This one here, you can see the difference in papers. This is more even text um, coverage of the coffee dye. Um, and you get it pretty much the same on both sides of the page. So that's up to you which way you want to do it. Um, that's those. And then these were the lace ones that we did um, in the two methods. Yes, I have got them both here. If I can get them out. You get a bit sticky in these plastic papers so this is the one this is the paper doily method that we used and this is the fabric doily method we used um, and there's your journal ruled or unruled um, that's the one I um, ended up downloading because the ones that I um, copy dyed didn't turn out too well um, there's your copy dyed um, book pages um, so anyway that um, is our papers and I've already gone ahead and put um, the base signature together and I'll show you whoops, what that looks like so we need 11 pages if you're going to follow along as I said if you're going to follow along this is how many we will need um, so first of all you just take all your pages and you fold them in half these are the copy paper papers that we dyed there's two of those first, and then a book page. These are single um, on both sides, front and back. We'll be putting those together, and I'll show you how to put those together. Um, this is an envelope. You don't have to use this one. You could use just your standard business size envelope. Um, anyway, we just fold that in half, and that goes in here. Um, the thing I didn't mention before was... Um, using a some wrapping paper um, as long as it's sturdy a thick sturdy wrapping paper this is um, like a um, paper um, what do you call brown paper bag weight paper um, if you haven't got this then just use some copy paper and we could um, put some the thinner wrapping paper over the top and do the same job and then we need um, one two three more coffee dyed copy paper this is um, that um, sketchable paper or our paper with the texture that's 110 or 29 pound weight uh, and this is another coffee dyed page that we'll be tearing down um, to make the center spread for our journal um, as I've mentioned before I like using um, a cover for the signature and this one here this is the one I used in this journal and I thought as it's Christmas, um, as a gift from me to you, I would give you um, free download to this image here. Um, I'll leave the link to this page in the description box below um, so you can go and um, download this onto your computer, computer and then print it out. Um, I recommend printing it out on that um, that um, 110 GSM weight or a little bit thicker you could do it in um, and also on borderless printing if you use that feature on your printer and um, and high quality you should get the same image as me and uh, yes so um, as we go along making this journal there are certain um, uh, bits and pieces in the journals and uh, other pages and um, some images that I will be offering to you as freebies um, to may help you get this journal made um, so you won't have to go out and buy any uh, of those um, extra bits and pieces. Um, you will know greeting cards if you want to use um, some greeting cards in your journal um, and some wrapping paper they're the only other two um, papers that we'll be using or that i have used in this journal um but i will um let you know as we go along um how to um get a hold of those 
extra freebies that I'm offering you um, to help you get this journal made. Okay, let's get on with it. So um, at the moment we're going to, the next thing we're going to do is, um, oh, we'll make the um, cover base. If you've got a, this is the, what I used to make the cover of the journal. It's just a paper bag. Um, this is a fairly sturdy one, um, but you don't have to have one with handles because we're going to take the handles off. So any paper bag will do with a medium weight. Um, actually, this part here, we're not going to use this bit. So I will undo this bit first. So just carefully tear all this off. Open it up if we can. So if it rips, don't worry about it. We won't be using this bit. It's just um, good to be a little bit careful when opening these bags up. to measure is our cover needs to be because our um, journal is going to be um, eight inches high by um, five and a half um, and we're going to have a half inch spine um, it's a soft spine so um, our cover um, needs to be um, we're going to cover cut the base down to eight and a quarter inches high by 12 inches wide and that will give us um, plenty of uh, space to make our cover with um, so we'll do that first um, I've got my cutting mat here and a cutting knife if I can locate it so we'll just cut this down to I've lost my pencil oh there it is so we'll cut this paper bag off We'll get it straight here on this line these lines here we'll get the edge straight along here and then where this crease is here we'll just cut it off there so it's just a bit of lining it up and using the line across to cut this down I don't need my pencil so just uh, you need a metal ruler to cut you, if you're using a craft knife to cut, otherwise um, draw a line across and use scissors to cut it. Um, hold it down firmly and cut um, slowly, but firmly. And it might take a couple of goes. There we go. That's the first step. Now we're going to measure eight and a quarter inches high, which is... I should put my glasses on. My eyesight's going a little bit wonky as I get older. So I'll cut this down here. Slowly but firmly through the layers. A bit there in frame so I didn't have to tear off that handle which is good and now you've got open all the way up so all I do is I cut off this is where the seam this part is where the seam is where they've just, um, glued the paper bag together so I'm just going to cut that bit off um, uh, making, making sure that I will um, make sure that I've got enough width. As I said, we're going to do um, 12 inches wide, or in metric, that's 30 and a half centimeters wide. So I'll do that first, and make sure. Yeah, so I've got plenty of room there, so I can cut that seam off. Oh, I don't need to cut that off to start with. Um, this. And I'm not in shop. This here is the edge of the paper bag so that can stay intact and that's all laid out flat 
So all I have to do is measure your 12 inches or 13 and a half centimeters across and we'll have our um, general cover base. 12 inches. I, work, I usually work in both um, inches and centimeters. I go from one to the other depending on um, the measurement. Sometimes I like working in even numbers. Sometimes inches gives you a better number than the metric. So there we go. So here we are with our journal cover. It doesn't look much at the moment, but we're going to, um, if you're handy with sewing, you could sew around the edges. Um, but I'm going to glue because this is a, is a beginner project um, we're just going to glue the two panels together um, if you've got a thinner paper bag then I suggest you gluing um, another layer at least or another two layers on top of this to give you some weight as you can hear how thick that is um, it would be I'd say about 120 GSM or what's that it's more than 30 L, um, pound weight on um, anyway we'll uh, get the glue and glue it together I'm just using this clear craft glue here and I'll glue around the edges and then in the middle and hopefully I'm getting on the paper and not on my cutting mat <laughs> I can't draw in a straight line and I certainly can't run a glue in a straight line either so, so you want a generous amount so that uh, uh, you get a good adhesion and um, less bubbling in the middle that should be good enough make sure you get it well then on the join and then we'll start from the outside here and just work your way across making sure the corners match up and then if you have a bone folder or a ruler you can squeeze the two pieces of paper together and make sure that glue adheres to both sides Now what we're going to do is, I've lost the top of my glue, that would be typical, anyway, um, so once that's done, we'll just fold the cover over in half and fold on that line, so it's in half. And we're going to put in a little bit of a spine. As I said before, it's half inch um, or uh, six millimeters in metric. And I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm um, getting a little bit blind. There we go. So, so that's your center spine, so half an inch. So we're going to measure, because I've started inches, I'll keep going. Um, a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on the other side um, from the center spine then we're going to bend if you have what do you call it um, embossing tools with the, the round edge on it so I just use the narrow end um, if you've got some plastic I've cut these down to make journal tops but oh sorry tag tops but if you got some hard plastic with the edge um something like that or the end the back of a um, thin butter knife as long as you don't cut yourself just to score these lines these spine lines here got the right edge just along there it makes it easier to fold these papers because sometimes they can not fold neatly all these here. There you go. 
and then we fold on those score lines we just put in. You can use the edge of your cover to keep it straight and then use something to burnish in those score lines and then we do the same thing on the other line on the other side of the central spine. Make sure it's straight across and then burnish that side. This just gives you a bit of a spine. We will be sewing our signature in using the middle spine. It just, when you, when the, um, when I got the journal, you can see this is quite a chunky journal. It just gives you some room for your, to, when you sew in your signature here. I don't know if you can see how thick the, from the the inner page to the first page it's quite thick from here to here you can see that thickness there it just gives you some space to um, compensate for that thickness in your papers because every time you add a page to the inside it pushes the page up to the outside so when you do a cover um, it gives you that much more room to make sure that all your pages fit within the journal if that makes sense so anyway, that's the way I do it. So anyway, this, um, the, what we're going to do now is we're going to put this aside for later next, um, in the next video, we'll put a cover on. So you need a piece of fabric that's a little bit bigger than the journal, um, which is eight and a quarter by your 12 inches or, um, 21 by 30 point five because the fabric we're going to actually fold over onto the inside so you'll be covering the the back or the outside of your journal and then we'll fold it in to just come in within um, about half an inch or um, half a centimeter um, on the inside so something that's a little bit bigger than the size of your journal cover would be good get that ready and we'll show you how to put the journal cover on your journal Okay, so the next thing to um, painting, start painting some of the background pages. So, or, and um, getting the your base pages um, ready to sew in. So once we get, the, we've just got one page to, to um, put a background on and um, a few things to do in this, in the base journal. And then um, it's ready to sew in when we put the cover on um, the fabric cover over your journal cover and um, then we can get on with the rest of it so um, this first one here we're going to do a brown background so I'll move this over so you can see what I'm doing and then I have to find my brushes again this brush here just a basic background here I've mixed up some paint already so what I've used is basically um, if you've got, um, I'll give you the names of the colors that I use, but you don't have to use these ones. I'll tell you what, this one, no, it's the wrong one. This one here, and I'll put my glasses on because I can't see. I'll have the wrong ones, of course. This is the one. This is a burnt sienna. All it is is a, um, a, a reddish brown, and this is a raw umber, which is a dark, um, cool brown and also um, Payne's grey which is a charcoal colour if you haven't got Payne's grey you just add a bit of white to black and you'll get this dark grey so all I did was um, put these um, in equal measure into this pan which I'll do now because I've run out of some so just um, we're only doing the one page today um, because that's the one we need to sew in the signature basically just an equal measure and then add some water I've got a little water jar here or I have um, a spray bottle is handy with water in so you can either spray in the water or just dip your brush in the water and mix it all up you get a nice dark brown color 
went more on the dark, um, cool side. I've lost, I've got too many paints out, that's my trouble. Burnt Amber, my raw Amber, I've lost. Um, a bit more of the, the dark, cool brown colour. Um, if you have some white paint, you can have white watercolour paint, which is here somewhere. Some white watercolour paint, have that on the side because we'll be using that over the top just to blend the colours in a little bit. Okay. Mix that in. And I think I need some more paint spray. I keep putting them away. You'll have to excuse me. This is my first um, actual tutorial on doing something. <laughs> so, a little bit all over the place. I'm sorry. There you go. So you want to make it a nice dark um, color, color. And I usually have a scrap piece of paper that I um, test the colors on before I put them on the page. So I'll see if I can do this. So you just want a, a color like that, just a dark brown you know, on the cool shade. So that, you know, so you have a spray bottle that's handy, the spray bottle, you can just spray the background a little bit, it just helps um, get the paint on the page without buckling it. And then all you do is just slap that paint on. Um, don't have to be careful about it and just slap the paint on as fast as you can, any way you want. The, um, because you wet the page first, it will tend to blend out on its own and you don't have to work too hard to get that on your page. So you want to work fairly quickly because um, it will dry quickly depending on your weather, of course. So once you've done that, then I just dab some of this white paint over the top. Just mutes the colour down a little bit. It's white and I haven't got enough out. So um, you can also use wash my brush out and having some tissue or paper towel is good to clean your brushes up. And always forget to have some out, so you just dab that off. Um, you can use acrylic paint. Just want to smooth that in to blend the colours out a little bit. Just to give it um, a bit of a muted finish. You can add the white to the paint before you do this if you want to, but it just gives you nice some nice variations in the colour. That's all you have to do. If I'm in shot, yes, good. So you don't have to be careful about this. Just get that colour on and in. And thing is, just um, enjoy the process. Knowing that you're making your own background pages for your journal. Which you will appreciate once it's all done. Okay, there we go. So just leave that to dry. See uneven texture, it doesn't matter. Um, we'll be stamping on top of this and this is just the background of a background page. So um, you don't have to be too careful or precise. Um, it's your background, you can do anyway, but this is the way I've done mine. Um, and I have one here that I did before to show you. Here we go. This is what it's like when it's dry. As I said, We'll be stamping over the top of this, so um, this will just blend into the background anyway, and you've got nice um, variegated shades. So that's that. So the next thing we're going to do is um, clean up my mess here. Put this aside. This. Yes. 
I brought out my best mat for you today. So I didn't think you wanted to see my messy mat, um, which you'll probably see in a future video. Um, you try and keep these mats as clean as possible, but they don't always last. So anyway, this, um, so once you download that cover page, that will go on the front here. And that will, we're going to cut all these pages down, but we're going to um, do the backgrounds first and before we sew them in, or um, we're going to cut them down. First of all, we're going to cut them down to eight inches high or 20.4 centimeters high. So um, that's the first job we'll do. But we'll, um, not at the moment, we'll just hold all the pages together. Then we have this one here, which is the fourth page. So we just take that out and I'll show you how to bind that. When I take pages out, I want to know my place. I just turn the page to the side and I know where to put this page back in because I'm always getting mixed up. So first of all, we will just put those pages together and I'm just going to measure against my cutting mat here and make um, the edge straight and square and then use my cutting knife which yes make, make sure it's all nice and squared up and then um, I'll have to move this over a little bit sometimes these um, pages out of books are not square amazingly you notice that sometimes the text on the page is not square either to the edge of the page so you just take off that rough edge and then put that together and get our masking tape here so we're going to join these two together using masking tape if you've got um using children's book or a magazine page or you don't mind having your pages on the side then you just have to fold it over and then you've got your page but i like i'm funny that way i like my um pages text running the one um the right direction so if you don't want to do this step um then you can skip it the other thing about this tape is you can actually see if you're putting it down so i try and put it down half way like that tear it off and then I butt it up against this other page here I think it that wasn't very good this one This is the easier way. I don't usually do it this way, I'm not sure why. Make sure they're together. Just fold that over and redo the spine here with my bone folder. And then we get the scissors. And cut off the tape from the ends. There you go. You got one page. Sometimes they buckle a little bit. But when you fold them up, they're going to be forever folded in your journal. So that's that and then later on we'll cut it down to eight inches high the next page in here we will be looking at is this envelope so we're going to have a um this panel is going to have um a panel put on the front a flip on the front of this one with, with a pocket in it so we don't want to make our page too bulky so this will be we're going to seal this off and we're going to open this up to make a pocket for the back page so 
all you have to do this has got some glue here so just use your glue and glue the edge down don't glue in here you can glue on this side but don't glue in here because we'll be opening that up and that'll be a pocket this way so you don't want to glue that down so you can glue here and this is going to be the spine of the page so you could glue on this side if you want it's not necessary oops I'm going too far so we just want from halfway across glued down actually I beg your pardon you want the whole thing glued down but you only want this bit on this side glued down here like that and like some tissue paper because I'm always over gluing there and we can fold this back over and reinforce the spine uh, like that what I didn't um, show you what to do is you just fold all these pages in the journal the base pages you fold them over individually and you score them I didn't show you how to do that so that's what you do with those pages um, I should have showed you that and I didn't score these so make sure you fold them over and score each one that uh, gets rid of the bulk of um, the spine along the spine so now this is being glued down as I said, I've got to get rid of my excess glue and now you want to oh, make a mark halfway across here so that's the halfway line I said here we're going to just slither that open and this is going to stay sorry this is going to stay closed on the left and on the right side we're just going to cut that open and you could do that with um, blade working this way outwards just a slither you only have to take a slither off the top here and open this up it's just a tiny slither just to open the top up like that now you should have this one should be open that up unhindered or well, this one stays shut and that's that oops so that's all ready to go get all these things out of the way and then this can go back in the journal where it's supposed to be and I'm stuck with all the binding then we go to the center this is the center spread on the journal and what we're going to do here is i've just drawn a line from here down to here and i'm here this way i'll show you the journal that i mean <clears throat> this is center spread this page here you can see it's been cut down here and then this one here has been cut down here so um you can see it, it has a neat edge because um, sometimes the tearing on thin paper doesn't give you a nice edge so what I did was I tore it to get a nice um, um, shape and then I used my scissors and I just trimmed up the edge so it's nice and straight so we'll do that now so I drew this line this line is actually for the back page but because it got a double diver it just makes it easier um, you can open this up and draw that line and tear it separately or together um, I could do that couldn't I <laughs> instead of being lazy and I've lost my other pencil but never mind so that's a terrible pencil that one I've got a lead pencil here somewhere there we go here and here so you're just drawing a line like this there we go and then you're just tearing it out if you don't want to tear it you can just cut it straight off 
where you don't have to trim up the edges. It's your journal. And you can do it any way you want. This way I do it. There's our centre spread. The reason why I then go and cut this is because we're going to be putting pieces of paper on um, for our pockets and whatnot, and it just makes it easier if the edges um, are trimmed. Um, makes cutting out those pockets a little bit easier, so you don't have to do this. But I, um, I don't usually, but because I'm putting pockets on there, it just makes it easier. I find anyway so just oops just trim up some of those straggly bits on the edges just to give a little bit more defined edge so when I'm, we do cut those papers out it's easier to do you can see what I mean here and the same with this bit here just trim off some of those little bits that stick out a little bit too much and trim that off. There you go. It's kind of like you just do tore the edges out, but um, down the track will make it easier. And then all we do with um, got the ends here. So that's that for the, those pages. The other thing that I um, was doing on some of the pages um, is we next we cut down the, the um all the pages so once you fold them over then we get the ruler and the pencil and you just measure down your eight inches or 20 20.4 centimeters um you don't have to do exactly eight inches if you want to do it 20 centimeters that's up to you um depending on whether you work in imperial or metric so we could just next thing we just go and um, trim all these pages down to the right height and then don't worry about the widths because the widths will change depending on what we're going to do with the edges and where they um, the pages um, lie in the in, placed in the journal um, so if you like to go ahead and cut all these pages to eight inches high or 20.4 centimeters high um, and we in the next video um, we will finish the outside cover and then continue making the background pages um, we'll also be able to sew in this into the cover and then we'll start working on um, putting all the the pockets and um, tucks and all that into the journal and some of these um, background pages um, panels that we'll put in so um, that's it for this um, video um, I hope um, you enjoyed doing that we've got a lot gone through a lot today um, and hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching bye bye